Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing NVIDIA stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. NVIDIA designs graphics processing units, GPUs, for the gaming and professional markets. It also designs chip units for the mobile computing and automotive market. Its primary GPU line called GeForce is in direct competition with the GPUs of the Radeon brand by Advanced Micro Devices. The company has expanded its presence in the gaming industry with its handheld game consoles, Shield Portable, Shield Tablet, and Shield Android TV. NVIDIA also provides parallel processing capabilities to researchers and scientists that allow them to efficiently run high performance applications. It has moved into the mobile computing market where it produces Tegra mobile processors for smartphones and tablets as well as vehicle navigation and entertainment systems. The company is also focused on artificial intelligence. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 336 billion market cap. They're trading at 544 a share and they have 619 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has a lot of free cash flow each year from 2.9 billion up to 4.2 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have a lot of net income, three to $4 billion a year. Revenue is a sales for the company and their revenue grows quite a bit from 9.7 billion up to 15 billion. They also have really good margins. A net profit margin over 20% is outstanding. They're 26 to 35%. Net profit margin is net income over revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. In the trailing 12 months, they converted 26% of their revenue into profit, which means 74% went towards expenses. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. And their gross profit is growing quite a bit, up to $9.3 billion, their highest by far in the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are depreciation and R&D. Then below that is operating income. And that also peaked in the trailing 12 months at $4 billion. Below that is the interest they receive on their investments minus the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses, then their pre-tax income. So they did have their highest pre-tax income in the trailing 12 months. Their net income was 3.8 billion, which was lower than 2019 of 4.1 billion. Because in 2019, they had a positive $245 million in taxes. This can happen with accrual accounting. It's just the way the companies recognize taxes. In the long run, it equals out. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. So when the company buys a new factory to build products, that goes into CapEx. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And free cash flow is the cash companies use to pay a dividend, to buy back stock, to pay down debt or to invest back into their business to grow it. This company has a lot of free cash flow each year and it seems to be growing. They do pay a small dividend, but another way to reward shareholders is to buy back stock. And they bought back 900 million in 2018 and 1.6 billion in 2019. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares in the market, which makes the remaining shares more valuable. When I invest in a business, I like to look at their operating cash flow. That's a better indicator of a company's financial health than net income. Operating cash flow is net income converted to cash because net income is accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. 
The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, that was $2.8 billion. Then you have to add back the depreciation of $900 million. Depreciation is an expense on the income statement that brings down your net income, but it's a non-cash item, so you have to add it back on the CFO section. They also had $1.2 billion of stock-based compensation, another non-cash item on the income statement. Even though they reported a $3.8 billion profit, they actually generated over $5 billion of cash. They're doing a really good job at generating cash. That's what you need when you have a company. You need to generate cash. Cash is the most important thing. It's the only way to grow a company and be successful. Let's look at a capital structure. $12 billion of equity, $2.6 billion of debt. They're 82% equity, 18% debt. But their net debt is negative $8 billion. That means if they wanted to, they can use the cash on their balance sheet to pay down all their debt and still have over $8 billion of cash left over. Their WAC is 13%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that $72 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $62 billion. We divide that by 619 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 101. They're trading at 544, so they're trading at a 441% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little higher than me. They're at 119 a share. So they're also saying the stock is overvalued. As some of you might know, the stock market is not reality because there are companies that make no money and their stock price is high. Investors look towards the future. Investors feel the future of this company is a lot stronger than its financials indicate. The stock price can go as high as investors feel. If investors feel the stock is worth $1,000, $2,000, $10,000, they will pay that price. If investors feel the stock is worth $50, they'll pay that price as well. Right now, they feel the stock is worth $544. This stock has only gone up the past few years. It did take a little dip here and there, but overall, it's gone up. It's done really well. So if you bought it down here a few years ago, you'd be pretty happy with your return on investment. This company seems to be raising its dividend periodically. It's up to 16 cents a share, but the dividend yield is only 0.12% because the stock price is so high, it makes the dividend yield seem low. But if you're investing in this stock, it's not because of the dividend, it's because of the stock appreciation. You would have made a lot of money on the stock price going up, not the dividend. The company pays out 10% of its net income, 9% of its free cash flow. This company has a beta of 1.42, so the stock moves about one and a half times to market. The stock has done really well the past 52 weeks, up 117%, much better than the S&P 500. And the 52-week low was 181, the high was 589. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. This is a pretty liquid stock. About 6 to 8 million shares are traded each day. And of the 619 million shares outstanding, 593 million are on float. 68% are held by institutions. And 1.26% of the shares on float are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have over $240,000 today. I wish I invested money in this company 10 years ago. Vanguard is the biggest shareholder at 8%, then BlackRock, then FMR, then State Street, and last is a CEO of the company owns 3.5% of the stock. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market's 10, the median is 15, PE is stock price over earnings per share, to calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 88. Investors are paying $88 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 23. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 28. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And they have 12 billion of equity, 11 and a half billion of tangible equity because they have 600 million of goodwill in their balance sheet and 49 million of other intangibles. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They can easily cover their interest payments. ROE is net income over equity. They have a great ROE at 31%. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They have way more than enough current assets on their balance sheet. They have a ton of cash, $11 billion. 
So the company's more than well capitalized. They had over four billion of free cash flow, nearly twelve billion of working capital, and they have a small dividend payment. So they almost have sixteen billion dollars of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on advanced micro devices, Amcor, Intel, Marvel, Micron, NXP, Skyworks, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Texas Instruments, all in the same industry as NVIDIA. If NVIDIA has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. They're a lot worse than all the price multiples because their market cap is so high. They have a really high current ratio, almost too high. They have a great ROE, they're pretty low in debt, and they're a really big company, second biggest on this list. And they pay a really small dividend, much smaller than the average. So to summarize, I have them trading at a significant premium because their stock price is so high. But this is a pretty solid company. They make really important products and they've been around now for 28 years. I rank their free cash flow 10 out of 10 because it's high and it's growing. I rank their revenue 9 out of 10 because it's also really strong and it's growing. I rank their ratios 5 out of 10. They have pretty weak price multiples. Their current ratio is way too high. You don't need more than two. But they do have a really good ROE and debt. This is such a big company. If you hold the stock long term, I think you should be okay. But if you hold it for less than a year or two, you might have to take a loss because it might drop. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.